Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing HR analytics, the most contemporary requirement for a HR professional to succeed is to have an analytical skills. Now basically today we will be what, what is analytics, what are the various types, the domains. I am more interested in, in ingraining the differences between business intelligence and business analytics. Uh, let us cover it with the structures and the delivery model. Now, <clears throat> what is business intelligence? Business intelligence, we are in, in uh, existence, an organization is in existence to make profit, to make a difference to the society, to cater to its client, its customer, provide the best quality products, best quality services. So basically, what are uh, the data that can come around it? We have reporting. If you look into it, we have reporting. We have personal manage management. We have data mining. We have benchmarking. We have text analysis, process mining, event. Now, this when we grind out here, that is what is business analytics is all about. It when the grinding takes place, and that comes to a decision, or should I say, it gives me a positive data as to form a concrete decision and that decision is meant by business intelligence so am i i hope i'm clear so we are in activities we are in existence the organization in existence to cater to this client is customers definitely to make a difference in their lives now how does it do, do it uh, by collecting various kind of reporting what are the performance management data feedbacks process mining steps even processing and based upon it we come to a positive impact or negative impact or a mix of both of them which which is basically the decision the success of the decision is all depends and it uh, defines the business thereby so business <coughs> intelligence is a set of theories methodologies processes architecture and technologies that transfer raw data into meaningful and definite information for business purposes. Please understand, it's a raw data which, which is uh, analyzed or which is grinded to, to come up to a certain decision, certain data set which helps me in coming to a de uh, decision. Coming, and that is what is business intelligence is all about. It. So, what is analytics? Remember, the topic is HR analytics. Now, it is the skills, the technologies, the application, the practices for continuously, continuous iterative explorations and investigation of past events, of past performance, which gives me a reliable inference to plan my business ahead. So, what I am doing it, I am learning from my experience, I am learning from my past and planning for the future. So that is what I do as a present. So what is business analytics? It is the skills, the technologies, the application and probably the process procedures for a continuous um, exploration. So history of business analytics, let us come to it. Now we have something called decision support system. I am sure all of you are uh, aware of decision tree making. So what if uh, an event happened? If the event is success, yes. If the event is failure, no. So if it is event is success, what does the following event happen? There may be two, three, four events. If the event is failure, do we go back to step number one or do we opt for opt out altogether? So that is what the decision tree was all about. It from decision support system, it is all about data warehousing, executive information, and OLAP. OLAP is online analytical processing remember this is a huge data business that we are coming into with uh, and we, we we all know that uh, nowadays an individual has been reduced to a data a data like your phone numbers a data like an email id a data like the demography a data like the social standing a data like the bank balance and so on and so forth so basically business intelligence came into focus way back in early 90s or should I say late 80s. So <clears throat> you look into it. Early nine, uh, 1900, it was all industrial economy. We were into steel, building of steel, building of railroad, exploring oil. In 50s, 60s, it was a uh, combination of street, oils, railroad. So what was it all about it? In the industrial economy, logistic and supply chain was 
prime importance. Financial came into 1980s. Then the integration of supply chain and so on and so forth. And last but not the integrated ERP or enter enterprise resource planning and the financial analytics. What I was looking into it is steel road oil. So it was an individual business in early 1900s, right? But in mid 1900s, 19th century, uh, 20th century, sorry. We had the conglomerate where we had a lot of businesses together working for one another. Move to uh, another 20, 30 years from now, now becomes the web economy, a consumer focused economy. That this is where we are looking at customer segmentation, web behavior, predictive analysis, and so on and so forth. Now, today, as we are speaking on the 21st century, probably 20, 22 years have uh, gone by. What are we looking? We are looking at talent economy. Talent economy is the skills that you bring into the table. The recruitment, learning, performance management, integrated workforce planning, business driven talent, talent analytics, predictive analytics, model and HR analytics. This is exactly what is nowadays. So what are the buzzwords? The buzzword is big data. The buzzword is cloud computing. The word buzzword is SaaS software as a service. All of us have come to around it. Now, if you look into big data, there are innumerable amount of data and data doesn't finish at all. It just doesn't vanish. It is so big that it is uh, it becomes very difficult to compile or compute or understand or decipher. Now we are looking at cloud uh, cloud computing. So basically cloud computing is a common platform that everybody can chip in with any of the problems that comes around it or cloud storage that everything basically doing everything on the web basically storing uh, uh, storing your information analyzing your information deciphering your information on the cloud those who are only interested will be doing the cloud uh, will be in the cloud system now software as a service definitely yes uh, i don't uh, require much of an elaboration on to sas so we'll come into stages the domain the types everything today analytics are concerned so if you look into it, business values on the y-axis, look, look out here, we have the business value on the y-axis, right? And we have the complexity on the x-axis. So what are we doing at earlier times when the business value is less, out here, out, let's say, and the complexity is absolutely missing. So what is it? Basically reporting, basically informing what exactly has happened. But when the business value becomes a little bit complex uh, or more, should I say, and the complexity would be of a um, uh, modern or minimum le level to a certain extent that things have crept out and things are changing. Why? Because the business volume has also increased. It is no longer on a lower scale. It is no longer on a lower scale. Probably we are working or the business is existing in a different geographies altogether. So <coughs> now comes how do we analyze what actually happened? How do we monitor what is happening now? How do we execute based on the data? How do we execute? That is what the predictive analysis is all about it. If you're getting things right out here, that means your business is going to go global. You are you started young, you started small, now it is becoming big. And with the passage of time, the more bigger the business is all about, the complexity also increases a lot. Absolutely, it becomes more camouflage and you have to keep a take, uh, take a note about it. So this is where the analytics is to be done. So basically, what is the problem out here? You need to do this element very nicely. Analyzing and monitoring. If you can analyze, if you can monitor perfectly, believe me or not, it is going to pay you rich we are looking at analytical models. If you look into it, past data, there were two datas which were in reporting format. Now, what is reporting format is basically what happened. Maybe a critical incident that happened. Maybe what are the number of sales that is happening? What are the number of raw products or the cost of raw products we are uh, making around it? Number of end products that we are looking into. So, that's representation of data or summarizing basically. Now, based on data, what are we going to infer or what we can conclude? If we want to uh, multiply 1x or 2x or 3x, x that means uh, two times or three times raw material is required because two times and three times is the what we are predicting as a future production level so that is the drawing conclusion now this is simple past data but is this right <clears throat> probably no because with the passage of time things have become very costly and that is the reason why you need to focus out here this is where the environment is getting dynamic people taste are changing people values are changing 
they are adopting newer products and they are discarding old products by the moment by the hour by the weeks by the days you look at it remember in your mobile phone you mostly it has been seen that everybody discards their mobile phone in fact less than thousand days after owning one so that means less than three years absolutely three years is what everybody discards a mobile phone and i'm talking about a very emerging economy in that advanced economy in the developed economy people are actually discarding it at the end of every year probably at the end of every 18 months which is roughly half the time that they are uh, owning a mobile compared to the emerging economies so this is what reporting is all about it it is changing we need to predict our behaviors we need to have the predictive analysis out here hope i'm clear so we need reporting definitely we have understood analyzing and monitoring which is the vital crux or the crux of it and then comes predictive analysis so analytical domain what are the domain you name it we have it we have it in retail sales yes we have it in retail sales we have in hr which we are doing right now at present we need to go for collection analytics telecom analytics your data arpu average revenue per user supply chain analytics fraud analysis what are the wrong things that can happen and how many wrong events happen per million per thousand per trillion or per billion if you're looking into it marketing analytics yes Financial analytics, finance is all about digits, all about numbers. Definitely, you got to go around it. Risk credit analysis, people are asking for loan. People are building their life on loans. And it's not that they die in loan. They definitely, most of them repay loan. Otherwise, the credit business would have been bust by now. So consumer behaviors and cohort analytics, your group behaviors that we're looking into it. Pricing analytics and definitely web analytics. So what are the tools that we go around it? So what does the tool tell me see there are many things that can around it we can talk about rate so proportion of one or more part as a whole of percentage it's a rate so what is the ratio it can be input is to output often used at a reduced fraction relative to other input is to output the basic example that i'm trying to give it to now then comes the composition breakdown of the whole part into a number of small parts showing each contribution of each part so if a five star hotel has got six restaurants if a five star hotel imagine six restaurant the how many and the fnb outlet is making a profit right so individually the six restaurant who is giving the maximum profit then you will find a certain restaurant is forming bulk of the profit let's say 40 percent of the profit is being catered by one single restaurant and probably two particular restaurants are there who are delivering less than 10 percent but those are elite uh, restaurant in fact the five-star hotel cannot deny those restaurants because existence of those five star uh, those restaurants in their properties make the property a five star property so we need to understand those composition index volume cost time you name it and we have it the quality performance of people process system satisfaction it is your feedback that comes around it the perception that you believe upon a, upon a process or a, your product or the company or the experience that you get around it so what are the software we have the excel the most common software with the business intelligence software and the erp reporting enterprise resource planning similarly for descriptive analysis now this is all about the representation of data we are talking about frequencies we can have an excel graph bar chart cumulative dist uh, distribution measure of central tendency the arithmetic mean the geometric mean the harmonic mean the positional mean median mode measure of dispersion is the character of variability in the data absolute range quarter and you name it we have it then comes the correlation the correlation is very good you know pearson correlation for continuous data and definitely for spearman correlation where there is an ordinal data where there the continuation data is missing so we have again the similar thing similar kind of software that can be coming out and i'm just trying to give you an example says this is an session for h analytics now we'll talk about inferential analytics we have random sampling right what are random sampling anywhere anybody well, from the population just picked up certain data then comes the systematic sam sampling the systematic sampling is in a population at regular interval probably after every five events or 10 percent or uh, every 15 percent you you need to understand of that after a regular interval we take into a systematic sampling now, then comes stratified sampling now stratified sampling is we don't take 
systematic sampling, but probably we go for a little bit of a subpopulation uh, from here and there so that it represents the whole population. So it is not at a regular interval. Again, an irregular interval would be a better way to uh, tell you what exactly would be a stratified sampling. Now, what is cluster sampling? Cluster sampling and stratified sampling, people might get confused. Now, remember, within a population, there are certain groups or there are certain uh, things probably who are homogeneous in nature. Let's say in organization, production people are homogeneous in nature. Finance people are homogeneous in nature. Or, or marketing people would be homogeneous. But as an employee of an organization, they all belong to the same population, right? So we have this cluster assembly which is mutually homogeneous, yet internally heterogeneous. Remember the example that I gave it to you. So we have statistical inter uh, interference. Inference about a population over the random sampling ground, confidence level has to be applied, which has to be more than 95%, and assertion of a statistical distribution of the population. Now we come to the linear regression or non-linear regression. What are exactly they going about it? It is all about correlation. Remember the ordinal, uh, ordinal uh, correlation where there is a break, where there is no continuous, uh, uh, continuous correlation with one another. So it's a linear regression that comes around. The factor analysis. Let us come. What can be measured and why HR is to be done done to measure it. Now, Peter Drucker famously said, and I keep on quoting, "What gets measured gets back, gets managed." So, if you can measure it, definitely can you manage it. So, basically, we have this this four quarters that can be around it. So, HR first try to measure, and if you can measure it, definitely you can uh, manage it. <coughs> then. You need to understand the efficiency of the capital that you deploy. That is what the return on investment is all about. It Because it is not only money, it is also the money spent on your employees, on your human resources. That needs to be analyzed completely. You cannot keep on training your employees. And after uh, getting themselves trained, the employee leaves your organization. That's a bad thing. So return on investment has to be poor then. So you need to understand your uh, your incentive is good your intention is very very good but still the uh, company is not making any any progression the re reason is the return on investment on the human resources or on the employees are missing so linkage of business objectives to the people strategy this is where i believe is the most requirement there has to be homogeneous or there has to be a correlation between the individual objectives and the company objective Please understand the workforce strategies determine workforce strategies are um, skewed in such a fashion that it is most likely to match with the outcome of the organization goals. Last but not the least, why we are out here because of performance management. Please understand if your performance, if everything goes right, you can actually, as said our sister said, by 30% more sales per employee. The productivity has to be Definitive. So, steps in HR analytics. Once is a hindsight, probably the past data that we are talking about it. Once is a insight, is the present data that we are talking around it. And then there's something called foresight of what we can predict. Now, these are the steps in HR analytics hindsight, insight, and foresight. If you can manage this, nothing like it. So, from past data, gather them. Insights, study them, analyze them. Let's say online uh, analytical pro processing or programming, you uh, manage them and then probably come up with a solution or develop predictive model. So, what generally is measured is basically an employee engagement, how long the employee gets, say, stays around here, the performances, the retention, the hypos and hypo pipeline, and uh, is what your succession planning would be all about it. Then comes the percentage of employees. Uh, from the development plan we have to remember this as the if employee develop altogether you can improvise anything and everything please understand so then we have the internal hire percentage now what kind of promotions how many of the promotion are going around it uh, diversity of workforce level level of expertise and competence so Mind you, hypo is the most thing. It, it comprises of everything. What is this? It's hierarchical input process output model. So hierarchical input and process output model should be very, very impactful in terms of employees, in terms of anything. Hierarchical improve it's your vertical inputs and process output, what we can so that is what is hypo stands for. So 
what can be measured? We can measure anything in HR. Please, please, recruitment, retention, career management, performance management, training, compensation and benefit, workforce, organizational effectives. And I give you just a brief, very brief glimpse as to what can be done in the subsequent three, four slides. I'll take a few of the sessions altogether to tell it to you how recruitment, how retention, how performance, how training can be organized, measured and probably it with you people is if you look into it i am giving you different different parameters on, onto which how many uh datas can be jotted down and these are just an indicative list please remember that this is just an indicative list now turnovers similarly for retention turnovers and cost of turnovers people if people you apply and they leave if they leave within six months it is a completely loss making proposition, not only the six month salary that you end up paying, but also the recruitment process that you've undergone, the cost for recruitment process that you've undergone. If people exist in your company at least for two years, it makes sense to become a break even point. So that is what the turnover is all about. It. Then the performance management. Performance management is average performance appraisal rating, employee turnaround rate, employee upgrade rate, high performance growth rate. Peer review rate, performance appraisal, participation rate, performance rating distribution rate. Now, we have it so many things. We have so many data that comes around it. Now, please. So, there's nothing to be discussed around here. Everybody. Now, what I am trying to give you is an indication of the data that can be created around it. Your successor pool, your cross functional mobility, the employee satisfaction with leadership, and so on and so forth. We come into the most common thing and believe me or not, training and development, since all of us have been educated, all of us, including you who are listening out here, including me probably, which well, we have all grinded into an education process, where be it on semester-wise basis, be it on a monthly basis, be it on an annual basis, we used to give, sit for an examination. And once we cleared for those examinations, we were uh, asked to or allowed to go to the next step or next class or next standard that we go around it. So this needs to do not end with the training and development also. So remember, education was the earliest form of the training and development. As a ALT, adult learning program or adult learning training, what should be the class size? What is the e-learning abundant rate? People who start with the vigor but fizzle out after spending some time on an e-learning basis. Employee satisfaction, training channel delivery model, training models for full-time employees. FT is full-time employees. Training up per occurrence. Now, there are organizations which says you have to do a minimum, let's say, 7 days or 14 days of a training, 2 weeks, 1 week to 2 weeks of training every 2 years to be considered for promotion. Now, this is this is the quality that has been prescribed by certain organizations and probably not been mandated anywhere else, but that, that shows the culture of the organization or ethos or the amount of investment that they want, the company wants to do it for their employees. Then comes the education and development, development program, penetration rate, must think. What is your education, your graduate degree, your high potential degree, your postgraduate degree, the tuition fee reimbursement, if there are any, if people are giving an ACE ratio payment, uh, payment to you to pursue higher education and so on and so forth. We come into compensation and uh, benefits. Most of us at the end of the day, we are looking for a monetary reward and that is what can be done forward for a, on an hourly basis, on a weekly basis, on to the bonuses, the eligibility rate, the productivity rate, and so on and so forth. So these are so many kind of data that can be accrued upon. Now, benefit for employees, full-time employees. Remember, FTE, I have said of uh, full-time employees, the benefit expenses. Now, what are benefits? It's not only the monetary compensation that you get at the end of every year or, sorry, every month, every week, or whatever on a daily basis if you are looking at it. What I'm trying to tell you, too, apart from the salaries and wages, there are perks and benefits also. Let's say you've been given accommodation or you've been given a vehicle or you've been given a mobile allowances or any other things, any of the, let's say, insurances, the health benefit. So these are all benefits that needs to be broken down and to be accrued down to an employee. Then comes the equity, the average number of options that an employee have, if there are any stock options that the employee uh, enjoys. So equity incentive, if there are an appreciation on the stock prices, definitely that is also an equity appreciation. As we come to the workforce, definitely under demography, we can come around it. Under structural, we can come around it. Under tenor, we also can go around it. The average tenor of the workforce, the structural, how many people 
probably are in different uh, in the L1, L2, L3, L4 categories. Let's say L1 being the bottomest or the, um, uh, or the, or the most uh, lower level rung of the employees and L4 being the most higher rung level of the organization between L2 and L3 are mid, uh, low mid level or high mid level kind of scenario. The way you want to go around it, so you can always see the custom of the you know, organization size, size. Is the organization like this? Is it bulkier like this? Or is it like this? Wherein people are more or less on the top and more on the bottom side. So this needs to be understood altogether, right? So you have to clearly tell me and clearly identify. So which kind of organization, the structure around it, the organizational effectiveness is similarly a pattern. It so critical areas of HR predictive analysis. Number one, the most vital area is of turnover modeling. How many people are joining and how many people are leaving your organization? This needs to be understood because this factors commuting time, time spent in the last role change and performance over time. Then comes the targeted retention. Please understand high risk churn out in the future and focus retention at and activity. Now it can be bonuses, it can be allowances, it can be incentive, it can be motivation, it can be just a holiday package for the full family of the employees who can accrue it for at least 12 months in our organization. That can be the retention strategy that you are looking at. Wow, to whom? Only to the high risk employees. The employees that you would not like to leave your organization. Then comes the risk management profiling of the candidate with high risk candidate, a candidate who is very proficient, probably much in demand with other organization also uh, can leave your organization at, at, at a speck of a time. Then we have the talent forecasting and so on and so forth. So we need to go on keeping our bench strength strong. The moment an employee leaves, we need to replace it. Otherwise, the productivity of the organization deteriorate. So we come to the last segment, the HR and the delivery model. Still, please mention it. You have to measure project data with 80% of the data and 20% of the analysis. But this is of the project, mind you. But when it comes to the services, it is all the other way around out here. On the services, this is 20% of data captured with 80% of analysis that needs to be taken care of. This is where the services sticks to be. So you have to build a dashboard that continuously correlates retention with engagement, competency, scores and other measures. This is where the complete interaction with the client takes place at all time. This is something which the client takes place at all time. This is where it is almost like a production unit where you have to look into the data part and probably skew this thing to come up with a good result. And that is what exactly all about it. So from project, if you want to transform a company from a project basis to a process basis, this is a way you have to go around where the 20% data captures and 80% analysis takes place. So HR head is basically what how does it been delivered delivering it now hr head if you look into the onogram nowadays there is something called hr analytics that comes into play otherwise it was everywhere was there we have hrbp we have the coe or center of excellence excellences the administration of the service sec, uh, services uh, sector. So we have these things. We used to have the location one, location two, or strategic business unit one, strategic business unit two. We have the business unit and so on and so forth. So nowadays, even in Ornogram, we have this called HR analytics altogether. So common mistakes to avoid simple and straight keeping metric life when it has no reasons to be alive. So that's one of the common mistakes that we gonna we keep on keeping the metric life when it is not required. We have shifted from that business altogether. Relying on just too few metrics is again up there. You need to corroborate with other inferences point also, other other data point also. But again, then people will always be questioning your data. You have two reasons, two point, uh, pivot points from where you're getting the data. People might be, uh, people might be, um, let's say, confounding you or debating on your decision. But when it has, and they might be asking for another pivot point, four, fifth pivot point, six pivot points to infer the data from. But believe me or not, 100% accurate data is too lengthy time and too confusion for you to do, take an appropriate decision at the right time. So these needs to be understood. HR efficiency metrics only while failing to address the impact of talent management. So it is at the end of the day, human beings are human beings. You need to take an emphatic view towards your employees, treat them as a human. And believe me, at times, data and human emotions are contradictory towards each other. So if you can be a little bit emotional, empathetic towards them, 
and go and change. So what is we are looking into it? We are not interested into a HR data warehouse. We are interested in delivering actionable business interest information so that is what HR analytics is all about it it is all about transparency it is all about a journey it is all about developing a culture and probably empowerment this is what the empowerment is all about it i come to an end of this video thank you for watching it